Can you tell when this old school PNG of me when I used to have hair has motion blur and when it does not? Currently, I cannot add my hair back, but I can add motion blur within Premiere Pro without using After Effects. If you're interested in that, stay tuned. What is up, Merce Nation? Javier Mercedes here for yet again another Premiere Pro tutorial. And on today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I just did that with my name tag. Motion blur in Premiere Pro. Are you ready? When I learned about this, I was psyched. I was so psyched that I Dabbed on all those Premiere Pro haters. If you guys are unfamiliar with who I am, my name is Javier Mercedes and I'm all about video tech tutorial stuff and talking to inspiring individuals to get you out there and doing those things that you love with eyes closed talking into a microphone like it's too late to apologize, but it's too late to not make a tutorial about motion blur and Premiere Pro. Let's do it! I'm just gonna start my sequence with normal parameters. 1920 by 1080, 23.976. You may have this pen tool right here, but just to give you guys an example, I'm gonna hit the lips tool. Inside Premiere Pro, if you want to add any kind of motion blur, go to the effects window, type in transform, and this will be more than meets the eye, I guarantee it. And I will show you here, no Decepticons up in this piece. I'm gonna center my position here. Here's how it works. I have my normal motion properties, and if I were to move this, there's going to be no motion blur on this circle. If you were to go to the transform, which is underneath the shape right here, you move it, still no motion blur. But if you do want motion blur on any clip or anything, all you have to do here is go to use composition shutter angle, de-click it, enter a number from zero to 360. The higher the number, the more the motion blur will be. Right here, I will go all the way to 360. I'm gonna take this circle and move it over here. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch on the position. Then I'm gonna go a couple frames into my timeline, move the circle over, and ooh, look at that. You can already see it happening. As you go through, you can see that from point A to point B, there is motion blur there. And like I said before, if you change the shutter angle, it will change the amount of motion blur that is on that circle. Now motion blur is not bound by just position. You can use it for rotation, scaling, all the other parameters that you see right here. So I'm gonna do this with something like the title of my podcast and scale it up. Normally I do it something like this, where it pops on like this, but let's say I wanted to scale it in with motion blur. I'm going to take this, add frame hold, now it will always stay on screen like this. Go to my transform property, drag it on, and now I'm going to do scale. We want it to hit 100, but we want to start from zero. Now I'm gonna do ease out, ease in. That's way too fast. Click this guy, move him in so it eases into its position. Turn off my use composition shutter angle. And 180 is a good place to start. Look at that. Vroom. Vroom. Very cool. Very, very cool, Premiere. Instead of using normal motion within Premiere Pro, try using the transform effect. It definitely adds an extra bit of gusto to your project. If something like this tutorial was super helpful for you, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment down below on what you would like me to tutorialize next. That's right, tutorialize is a word. Live that life of abundance, y'all. See you on the next one.